Hey guys, Zot here, and welcome to It's Time to Reroll, Healer Edition. If you're new to the game, looking to reroll, or even wanting to try something new, then this is the video for you. So, some common questions we get asked are, what's the best healer right now? What healer would be best suited to me? Is this healer better than this healer? Well, in this video, we're going to be addressing that by covering what are now considered the top three healers, all strong in their own individual ways. We we'll cover the strengths and weaknesses of each healer individually to help you decide what best suits you. And then later in the video, give you all the stats, Azerite gear, and even some compositions to get you ready to go straight into arena. Currently in the meta full of melee cleaves and mana issues, the current three strongest healers are Restoration Druid, Mistweaver Monk, and Holy Paladin. All of these are strong for a numerous amount of reasons, and each has a very unique playstyle. But to begin, let's cover the strengths and weaknesses of each, starting with Restoration Druid. Restoration Druid is a very mobile, healing over time based healer, with a potential to bring some crazy crowd control. This healer is for those that enjoy to make plays and kite their enemy whilst their healing over time effects do the work. Now let's take a look at the strengths and weaknesses of Restoration Druid. Strengths. Number one, very strong healing over time. Restoration Druid has the most passive healing in the game, with their healing over time effects like Rejuvenation and Life Bloom doing the majority of their healing, you can often sit back and let them do a lot of the work. Number two, great crowd control. Restoration Druid has some of the strongest crowd control in game for a healer, bringing Cyclone as well as a stun. So if you enjoy more of a CC based healer, then this is definitely the pick for you. All specializations of Druid have good mobility, and Restoration is no exception to this. You have access to Travel Form, Wild Charge, Tiger's Dash, and even Sprint, so the fact you can't be slowed and could shift routes is a huge bonus. Number 4. Ability to Shift Form If you're good on Druid, surviving can be easy due to Bear Form. If you're always forward thinking and manage to pre-Bear Form stuns, you can often survive without using any cooldowns. The same goes with Crowd Control. You can shift things like Polymorph, Hex, and Repentance, so worrying about your position at all times is little less of a problem. Now let's take a look at the weaknesses. Number 1. Struggles from behind Due to a large amount of your healing coming from HOTS, which are healing over time effects, falling behind on a Druid can often mean the end. You need to always stay ahead of the damage, as Druids lack any strong mechanic to recover from when behind. Number 2. High Skill Cap Resto Druid has a much higher skill cap when compared to the other healers. You need to be constantly on the lookout for incoming damage, so you can already have your hots onto the target. And things like shifting before stuns and shifting polymorphs can often be harder for newer players. Also knowing when you can push for crowd control without your team falling behind. Number 3. Weaker single target healing Druids also lack any real strong single target heals. If your teammate is unable to kite, and is getting bursted down, if you don't have cooldowns like Iron Bark or a Swift Mend up to counter the incoming damage, they can often just simply die through your healing. Number 4. Vulnerable to Purge Druids are also extremely vulnerable to Purge. Things like Kleptomania can remove all of your healing over time effects on your teammate, and give you an insanely hard time recovering. Mistweaver Monks have always notoriously been the best cleave healer. Added damage, super strong heals, if you're free to cast nobody is ever going to die. So if you enjoy pumping out healing per second and also being able to solo enemies yourself, Mistweaver is the class for you. Now let's take a look at their strengths. Number 1. Way of the Crane Way of the Crane is why Mistweaver is so prevalent right now. Mistweaver does some ridiculous damage whilst his cooldown is up. You literally turn into a DPS, and whilst doing so your damage also does ridiculous amounts of healing. Number 2. Strong Single Target Healing Mistweavers hands down have the strongest single target healing in the game. If they have mana and are able to cast, nobody will ever be close to dying. Number 3. Very Mobile Mistweaver has two rolls and a portal. They are one of if not the hardest healer to train and maintain uptime on. They can almost always easily escape and then heal themselves to fall. Number 4. Good Utility Surprisingly, Mistweavers bring very good utility. With Ring of Peace, Leg Sweep, and the option to also play Disarm, you can help to reduce damage greatly and also help your team set up kills. 
Now, let's take a look at the weaknesses. Number one, vulnerable to interrupts. If you're not playing Aura Mastery and where the crane is down, Mistweaver lacks any form of instant healing and have to cast to top their teammates. This means if you're caught in a position where you have to deal with interrupts, whilst either yourself or a teammate is dying, it can often become very difficult to recover. Number two, mana issues. Having to cast a lot and providing zero damage reduction, Mistweaver relies on healing through the damage instead of popping say a cooldown like Pain Suppression or Iron Bark. This can often make you go out of mana very quickly. Number three, limited ways to avoid crowd control. Mistweavers are also very vulnerable to crowd control. With no interrupt or hardly any tools to avoid crowd control, if caught out of position with no mobility, they can often be CC'd without any counterplay. Number four, vulnerable in stuns. Mistweavers can't use any ability inside of stuns anymore, with the changes to both Way of the Crane and Healing Elixir. If caught inside of a stun without a way out, Mistweavers can often be in a lot of trouble. Next up, we have Holy Paladins. Holy Paladins are the masters of defensive cooldowns and keeping your team on the aggressive. Being able to bring both good crowd control as well as damage, if you like playing aggressive, Holy Paladin is the choice for you. Now, let's take a look at their strengths. Number one, insane cooldowns. Freedom, sacrifice, blessing of protections, Holy Paladins can bring a huge amount of defensive cooldowns for their team to survive. If you're worried about falling behind and lack of healing, then Paladins are great at dealing with those situations. Number two, good crowd control. Hammer of Justice, Repentance, or even Blind, Paladin brings some very good crowd control for their team and can always cover what CC you're missing. If you play with a Mage, you can bring a Fear DR in the form of Blinding Light. If you play with a Lock or Shadow Priest, you can bring Repentance. And also having a five second stun is strong in all scenarios. Number three, good versus damage over time effects. Holy Paladins are great versus things like Shadow Priest and Affliction Warlocks, thanks to having access to Shadow Aura, reducing all dot damage by 15%, as well as having access to an AoE dispel on a very short cooldown from Cleanse the Weak. Number four, Avenging Crusader. Being able to heal and do damage is something Monks and Holy Paladins have in common. When Paladins have Avenging Crusader up, they not only do ridiculous healing, but are also capable of doing some very strong damage. Moving on to weaknesses, number one is vulnerable to crowd control. Paladins have probably the hardest job avoiding CC out of any healer. Outside of running with Divine Steed or pre-hand of sacrificing something, you have no way to avoid any form of crowd control. Number two, reliant on cooldowns. Once Paladins are out of cooldowns, they can often lack the raw healing or output to sustain their team or even recover from the damage. Number three, immobile. Compared to the other two healers, Paladins are extremely immobile. Having only Divine Steed for mobility, Paladins can often struggle kiting or moving around the map compared to other healers. Number four, weak casted heals. Outside of Divine Favor and other cooldowns, Paladins have weaker healing than our other healers on the list. If your partner is being trained and you have nothing left, he will likely just die through your healing. All right, so hopefully the strengths and weaknesses of our free healers give you a little more help and insight deciding on which one is best suited to you. So let's now get started going through each spec individually and giving you all the information you need in regards to talents, Azerite traits, and compositions. Starting with the Restoration Druid, let's first cover what talents you should be picking. Let's start from the top and work our way down. For the first row, you should be mainly playing Prosperity. This is great for giving you some extra single target healing, as well as synergizing well with your Azerite trait Grove trending. It's also worth noting when you feel like you won't need the added single target healing and are instead healing something like a Dot Cleave, Scenarium Ward can be great at giving you a little extra passive healing. Next up is your Mobility tier. All three of these can be considered and are all very situational. Wild Charge should be your default pick, however as it's good into almost every matchup and is multi-purpose. Renewal can be good when you feel like you don't really need any mobility, but the added healing would help you more. Think things like Caster Cleaves, where you don't want to be pushing for crowd control. Tiger Dash is also very useful in matchups where you want to be sitting back more, but still want that option to be able to quickly move around the map, to either push for or avoid crowd control, or even set up drinks. Again, on the next tier, all three options are valid. Guardian Affinity, however, should be your default. This is just great when being trained and helps reduce damage and gives you access to Frenzied Regeneration. 
Balance Affinity is a great choice when you know the team won't target you. This allows you to more easily land crowd control with that extra range. It's also especially good when up against Rogue Mage, as you can cast without worrying about being polymorphed. Feral Affinity is more niche. It's a good talent if you lack stuns but puts you out of position and requires you to get restuffed consistently. Mainly, however, taken for 2v2 to have that extra aggression. On the next row, Mighty Bash should be your default choice. The only exception to this is when your team has a lot of stuns, but you feel like you could make use out of Mass Entanglement to take some melee out of the game, for instance. Very niche, but sometimes worth considering. Moving on, on the next tier, you're going to be wanting to take Soul of the Forest. This is just great all around and has some good synergy with Prosperity and your Azerite traits. However, in some very niche situations, you can consider Tree of Life. Things that are looking to win fast with purges are a great example of when to take this cooldown, as it will allow you to easily heal through the damage without the need of your healing over time effects. Nice easy one for this next tier, Stonebark is just the only relevant talent for every single situation. You'll never be specking out of this for PvP. Again, for the last tier, it's very simple, with Germination being the best in every situation once again. The extra rejuvenation also helps to increase your overall healing from your mastery. Moving on to PvP talents, the talents you should be playing by default are firstly focused growth. This is great as it really aids in helping your single target healing and healing through the pressure of things like cleaves, and is basically the only talent you won't be swapping out. Overgrowth is also super strong for easily recovering when behind. Coming out of a CC with no hots, no problem. Also, when against things with Purge, you can easily add back your healing over time effects to the target. Cyclone is also great in most situations. It's mandatory in twos for the CC and when playing certain 3v3 compositions, where you are required to push for Cyclones. Mark of the Wild can also be taken when up against Caster Cleaves that include Elemental Shamans, Balanced Druids, Destruction Warlocks and even Frost or Fire Mages. Fawns are great when facing melee cleaves as it's good at creating some pressure and also forcing the enemy to think twice before training your ally. On the topic of melee still, Revitalize is a great pickup when up against melee cleaves as also the increased healing is nothing to be underestimated. Master Shapeshifter is primarily used in 2v2, just for some added aggression when paired with Feral Affinity. And lastly is Nourish. This is good for keeping people topped without having to use Swift Men charges. However, it consumes a lot of mana and is a long cast. Moving on to Azerite traits, there is one above the rest that you should be looking to get on all of your gear, and that is Grove Trending. This just adds a very strong healing over time effect to your Swift Men. To pair with that, you want to have one of each of Waking Dream and Rampant Growth. Waking Dream is some nice passive healing added to your Yosira's Gift, great versus all compositions, and Rampant Growth gives you some extra healing on Regrowth and also adds some extra healing to your Life Bloom target. Aim to get one of each of these, and then for your third trait it doesn't really matter. Another Rampant, another Waking Dream, or just a high level Grove Trending with a random trait. It doesn't really matter. However, Lively Spirit can be a good third choice for the extra mana. Last of the boring stuff is stat priority. For gear, you should aim to have the maximum amount of both haste and mastery. Your stat priority looks like this, so pieces with both haste and mastery are heavily favoured. Now you know what to be aiming for in terms of gear and talents, let's take a look at some compositions you should be looking out for to play. Assassination Mage Restoration Druid Known as RMD, this composition requires you to play a little more aggressive than you usually would, pushing for cyclones and rotating crowd control with your mage. Very strong defensively, offensively and CC wise, just a great all around composition, however probably not the easiest to step right into. Elemental Mage Restoration Druid A bit more laid back in comparison, you should be looking to just focus on doing as much HPS as you can and kiting with your team. Setting up kills takes a back seat whilst you focus on surviving and kiting your enemies until you can simply outlast them. Demon Hunter Death Knight Restoration Druid Same as Ellie Mage, this is the melee version. You should be looking to just play as defensive as possible as your team are very self-sufficient in terms of healing. You're mostly going to be the kill target so just look to stay max range and not attempt too many aggressive plays. Next up, we've got Mistweaver Monk. 
This agile healer is great at almost all aspects and perfect for healing cleaves. As always, let's begin with the talents. Starting from the top, we've got Mist Wrap. This is the only talent worth mentioning in this row for PvP, as it's just far superior to the other two due to the increased uptime of your biggest hot and the healing bonus it provides. Next up is your mobility tier. Again, there is only really one option, and that's Chi Torpedo. This just extends the length of your roll and in also increases your movement speed afterwards. Great for kiting and great for pushing to be aggressive. In some compositions, Tiger's Lust can also be considered, mainly when playing melee cleaves and up against classes with an abundance of roots. This can help your DPS partners with uptime. On our level 45 for row, we've once again only got one option, and that's Manatee. This is by far the best talent in this tier and is a great mana saver in such a mana important meta, perfect for combining with your way of the crane. Next up, we've got the crowd control tier. Here, we've got a few options, heavily depending on what composition you're playing. However, your default should be Ring of Peace. This is just a standard pick and can be used in a ton of different ways, helping you kite, helping you reduce damage, interrupting casts, just great all around. Song of Chi Ji can be taken in rare situations where you value some extra crowd control and don't have a fear DR. You can combine Paralyze into Leg Sweep into Song of Chi Ji for some hefty crowd control chains. Tiger Tail Sweep is rarely taken but can sometimes be considered when your team lacks consistent stuns. Up next, your default pick should be Healing Elixirs. This should be taken in all situations. It's just some nice added instant healing that can be used on demand. Moving on again, we've got another clear pick and that's Summon Jade Statue. This just provides effortless passive healing on the target that you've recently Suvin misted. And on the final row, once again, we've not got much choice. Focus Thunder is just simply hands down the best in every situation presented in PvP. The extra empowerment mainly used on Vivify for the free heal or Rising Sun Kick during your way of the crane. Alright guys, that's all of the talents, let's now move on to PvP specific talents. Miss Weaver has a few options here which are heavily dependent on what comp you're facing, so we'd discuss the relevant ones and give you some situations where you would want to use them. First up is Chrysalis, this is just an all round great pick. You'll find yourself using this in pretty much all games. It reduces the cooldown of your life cocoon to 55 seconds, and when paired with the Burst of Light as a right trait, can also do some very good healing. Way of the Crane is also a very common pick. It's an excellent talent to take in most matchups for its huge healing output and offensive pressure. Counteract Magic should be taken whenever you have a magical dot damage on the opposing team. Zen Focus T can be a nice pick when you're struggling with interrupts, say for instance if you're facing MLS and have to deal with free ranged kicks. Grapple Weapon is again very situational. It's a great option against some melee teams with strong offensive cooldowns where you can negate it by just simply disarming the target. Okay, that's all the talents covered, let's now move on to Azerite traits. There is two main traits you're looking for on your gear. The first one is Overflowing Mists. This just adds some extra healing to your enveloping and is extremely strong. The second being Burst of Life. This reduces the cooldown of your cocoon by an additional 20 seconds and also makes it heal everybody for a decent amount when expiring. For stat priority, you're looking to get versatility and then either haste or mastery as a secondary. Both are equally good. Your overall stat priority looks like this. However, it's quite nice to have a mix between both haste and mastery so they can best benefit each other. Finally, let's cover some compositions you should be on the lookout to play. As mentioned, Monk is more kitted to healing cleaves due to the offensive pressure that they can bring. Windwalker Death Knight Mistweaver. Known as the Walking Dead, this cleave is extremely strong, first due to how mobile both the monks are, and the Death Knight's passive healing, meaning there isn't really an easy target to focus. Secondly, it's just how much consistent pressure this comp is able to put out. This composition has been making its mark on both ladder and competitive play for a while now. Warrior Death Knight Mistweaver. Known as TSG, this is similar to Windwalker Death Knight but just struggles with uptime on certain classes. However, the pressure this composition is capable of putting out when able to have uptime is rivaled by none. Windwalker Destruction Mistweaver. This composition is a little different to the rest. However, Monk is great in this composition due to how much of a threat destruction warlocks are. 
if you're able to easily keep them sustained with your strong single target heals, whilst also with assisting with leg sweeps, ring of pieces to help him get bolts off. Moving on to our final healer, with the abundance of defensive cooldowns to keep their team on the aggressive, we have the Hody Paladin. Once again, let's begin with talents. Starting from the top, there is only really one option, and that's Besto Faith. A nice instant heal that should always be taken for PvP play. Up next, we've got a few options depending on what you're facing. First is Cavalier. This just adds an extra charge of Divine Steed. Great for kiting melee, or even when you value some added mobility. The second choice is of course Unbreakable Spirit. This should be taken against comps that can easily and frequently make swaps to you, such as RMP. Our third row is the crowd control tier. All three of these talents can be considered depending on what you're playing and matchups. However, your default should be Fist of Justice, as it just reduces the cooldown of your stun and is great in almost all setups. Repentance is a great pick when playing with things like Warlocks, Balance Druids or even Shadow Priests, who don't bring a Polymorph Diminishing Return, allowing you to bring some added crowd control. Blinding Light can be taken if the comp you're playing already has access to several stuns. For example, if you're playing sub R Impala, you won't need Repentance due to Polymorph and your Rogue brings ample stuns. Easy one once again on this tier, Devotion Aura is just the best in every situation for PvP combat and should always be taken. Same as above, not much option on this next row, with the other two focused more around AoE healing, Holy Avenger is the best talent in this tier and should once again always be taken. Moving on, we have our tier dedicated to Wings. Sanctified Wrath should be the standard pick here as it's more mana efficient and doesn't sacrifice your position to heal. Avenging Crusader can be taken in any situation where you require some more offensive pressure, or you think you can get away with the mana cost and sacrificing your position. This is also great at countering Dot Cleaves like Shadow Priests or Warlocks. On the final tier, once again we have two choices. The default should be Divine Purpose. This is just some added healing as well as mana reduction. Beacon of Faith can also be considered against compositions that like to do spread pressure damage. This will save you some mana as it will increase your AoE healing, however it comes at the cost of a lot less single target healing. Now let's move on to the PvP specific talent tree. These change quite often and are heavily dependent on what you're facing, so let's discuss all the relevant ones and give you some situations that you should be taking them. First up is Ultimate Sacrifice. This should be taken in pretty much all scenarios, just for safety. However, you could potentially drop it against some heavy dot cleaves. The Divine Favor is a great talent all around that just boosts your next heal as well as being a great tool at dealing with interrupts. Light's Grace should be taken as also as a default talent and is great in pretty much all matchups as it not only provides a 15% damage reduction, but also increases your Holy Light healing by 50%. Blessed Hands is up next. This can be swapped out for Divine Favor when you're up against the cleave without a reliable offensive dispel, such as TSG for instance, where the extra bop and freedom gains a lot of value. Cleanse the Weak, this can be taken instead of Divine Favor when once again up against dot based classes, such as Affliction, Shadow Priest, Balanced Druids or even Elemental Shamans. Divine Vision is also extremely strong when up against Shadow and Affliction and should always be taken versus these two classes. Moving on next to Azerite traits, there is two you should be aiming for as Holy Paladin. The first is Glimmer of Light. This just increases your healing from Holy Light and gives you a little extra AoE healing. The second is Radiant Incandescence. This again is a buff to your Holy Shock, making your critical strikes add an additional healing over time effect. In regards to stat priorities, it looks like this. You want to be maximizing your critical strike, then aiming for versatility as an off stat, with haste and mastery being a lot weaker. Last up, let's go through a few top tier compositions you should be on the lookout to play as a Holy Paladin. Assassination, Fire Mage, Holy Paladin. Great setups with the Holy Paladin being able to assist the mage in easily getting out crowd control. An insane burst damage from the Fire Mage and Assassination Rogue. This is probably Paladin's strongest comp right now. Elemental, Mage, Holy Paladin. Elemental can assist the Holy Paladin in avoiding crowd control, allowing you to extend the game, doing setups around your Hammer of Justice and Lightning Lasso, eventually filtering through your opponent's defensive cooldowns. 
Demon Hunter, Death Knight, Holy Paladin. This composition plays similar to the Resto Druid variant, you're going to be focusing on surviving and burning the enemy's mana. You can assist your Demon Hunter to land burns with Hammer of Justice. Look to play defensive however and let your two DPS abuse their self healing. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and it helped you somewhat in deciding what class to play or simply inspired you to try something new. Thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill if you enjoyed. And also remember, if you want more information on these classes included in this guide, be sure to check out the rest of our more in-depth class specific guides.